there! It's time for the third chapter of Voting and Elections. And I have to say, this chapter is about a very interesting topic that's hard to understand, even for me. So, let's jump in! So I want you to have Epic open. I notice in looking at it... Oops, I just said the wrong thing. We're on chapter four, aren't we? Oops. Um, in looking at Epic, I see that Giovanni is the only one who shows that he's read this in Epic. So remember, I'd like for you to not really watch me read to you. I want for you to listen as you read. I want you to use your brain just a little bit more. All right, let's go. Early American leaders had to decide how the president would be elected. Some wanted the U.S. Congress to elect the president. Others wanted state lawmakers to choose. Another group wanted citizens to elect the president directly. The framers, so the people that were setting up our country, like building a frame for it, the framers settled on a compromise. It is a system called the Electoral College. It is an indirect method of electing the president and vice president. And so that's a picture of the caption says at the bottom says Senate pages. So those people are called pages, even though they're not books, um, arrive in the House chamber carrying sealed certificates to be announced by the Electoral College on January 14th, 2013. They look excited. Next page. The Founding Fathers outlined how it works in the U.S. Constitution. Remember, that's a document that says how our government works. They made it up. That was their job, the framers of the Constitution. Each state and the District of Columbia get electors. They get one elector for every representative and senator they send to the U.S. Congress. The total number of electors is 538. For a candidate to win, he or she must have more than one half of these electors' votes. That, this means a candidate needs at least 270 electoral votes to win. So next Tuesday, in, in a week, we, uh, at least me of the we, uh, will be looking at the TV and looking to see how many electors have voted for either Biden or Trump. And so once they get to that magic number of having over 270 electoral votes, then they win the office that they've been seeking. Electors. Each state can select its electors however it likes. They are usually chosen at conventions, those are big meetings, held by political parties in each state. Electors pledge to vote for a specific candidate. An elector chosen at a Republican convention would pledge, or promise, to vote for the Republican candidate. All right, now I'm going to stop for a sec to look at the other information on that page before I turn the page. Um, there's a big map. What does that mean? Hmm. It says this map, uh, the end of the Electoral College, this map shows the 11 supporters of the National Popular Vote Plan. This plan would guarantee the presidency to the candidate who receives the most popular votes, the most popular votes in all 50 states and Washington, D.C., how does this graphic help you better understand the information in the text? So it's showing you which state, and California is one of them, which state voted to have the Electoral College tossed in the trash. Not literally, we don't want to hurt anybody. Um, and just let peep citizens like me and you, once you get to be 18, vote for a president and vice president. Because right now, even if we vote one way, <clears throat> if the Electoral College votes a different way, which is what happened in the last election, the popular votes from citizens said that Hillary Clinton was to be president. But then the Electoral College said Donald Trump was going to be president. 
and they, what they vote for is more important than what the citizens vote for. Interesting, huh? And um, on the side where there's a green rectangle, it says perspective, and that's points of view, what different people think. The national popular vote. In 2006, a campaign to change the way the president is elected began. It is called the National Popular Vote Plan, and that map is about the same thing, right? Under the plan, states would promise their electoral votes to the candidate who wins the national popular vote. This system would guarantee that the candidate who wins the popular vote would also win the presidency. The plan needs 270 electoral votes to succeed. So far, 10 states and the District of Columbia have agreed to the plan. Together, they, the 11, have 165 electoral votes. So we'll see. I wonder if by the time you are 25, the electoral, electoral college will be gone. I don't know. Oops. All right. Ooh. So at the bottom of page 31, I'll continue reading. When citizens go to the polls on election day, next Tuesday, they are actually voting for electors. The names of the electors appear on the ballot by the name of the candidate in some states. In other states, only the candidate's name appears on the ballot. And I think that's how we are in California. In both cases, the voter is choosing the elector who is pledged to the candidate. Um, popular vote versus electoral, electoral vote. Four times in U.S. history, a candidate has won the popular vote but lost the electoral vote. The most recent time was in 2000, the year 2000. George Bush and Al Gore ran against each other. Gore won the popular vote. Bush won the electoral vote. He became president. The other three times this happened were in 1824, 1876, and 1888. And as I said, it happened four years ago too, or almost four years ago. That means this book is probably at least a few years old, but not very old. All right, heading back to the general text. Making it official is the subtitle. When the election is over, the results are announced. These results are called the popular vote. It reflects whom citizens chose for president. Winning the popular vote does not make a candidate the winner of the election. He or she must have at least how many? 270 votes in the electoral college. Electors in each state meet on the first Monday after the second Wednesday in December. The electors meet in their home states. It is then that the electors vote. A candidate who wins the popular vote in a state also wins the state's electoral votes. The only exception to this is in Maine and Nebraska. In those states, electors vote based on the share of popular votes the candidates get. After the electors vote, the results are recorded. Each state sends its results to the U.S. Congress. On January 6th, Congress meets to tally the votes. The vice president announces the results. On January 20th, the new president is inaugurated. And that means that person uh, like starts his or her job. Lawmakers, justices, and other leaders gather at the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C., the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court delivers the oath of office to the new, newly elected president. <clears throat> Excuse me. Once the president takes the oath, which is like a promise, I promise I'll do my job to the best of my ability, uh, he or she is the nation's new leader. Da, 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 da. And that's the end of that chapter. And I want you to write in your journal and post to Seesaw what you think of all that. So see if you can say what you think the Electoral College is, although, pff, like I said, it's kind of a weird thing. Um, and maybe write what your opinion is. Do you think it's a good idea to have that? Or do you think it would be better to 
<clears throat> go with the idea of just letting citizens vote and whoever gets the most votes from the citizens of our country that would decide the election. So write what you think, okay? Don't just copy straight from the book, all right? Because that doesn't involve thinking, just copying. All right, bye.